Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one's awesome. It's with Andrew Thomas Lee, the photographer. He is a phenomenal photographer, and I'll put links to his work below, and if you're watching on the YouTube side, you've seen some of his images in the opening montage, but I could live in his photos. I mentioned that to him in the interview. It, there's something soulful and rich and gritty and earthy and real about his photos and the way he composes his photos. It's just, it's spectacular. And he's photographed a lot of barbecue people and a lot of barbecue places. And in the interview, he talks about his time that he spent with Helen Turner at Helen's Barbecue in Tennessee. And it's, the stories are great. The photos, I was looking at the photos and I, I knew I recognized the woman, but I couldn't tell who it was and we talk about that. But he's photographed countless people and we talk about a number of them and I'll put again links below to those images but I just wanted to hear about his path I interviewed Pat Martin for his book Life of Fire which is photographed spectacularly and the photographer was Andrew and Pat mentions them and talks about the collaboration and the process and how great a guy Andrew is and how much he loved working with him so I knew I had to talk to Andrew but I didn't know much about him and one thing that comes up which <laughs> It's really cool. Is he was in some bands before he became a photographer. He was a wedding photographer, and then he branched out into food. And I won't mention the band. It comes up in the interview. But it's one of my favorite bands. And it's just shocking that he was in that band. And it's such a unique thing. So anyways, I know you're going to dig this. I'm not going to get too much further into this. It's a wonderful interview. And there's a lot of stuff, if you're a photographer, that you get out of it. If you're a barbecue lover or just someone who's a creative and interested in things, it's, it's perfect for anyone. I can't thank Andrew enough for taking the time. Oh, and also, he shot the photographs for... Matt Horn's book, Matt Horn out of Oakland and Horn Barbecue. He shot the photos for that book too. So he's, and he's done Salt and Star. He's done a lot of different cookbooks, but uh, those two in particular for barbecue. But again, I can't thank him enough for taking the time. Please check out his stuff and check out his books. If you're enjoying these, please subscribe. That way you don't miss out. Hit the bell and notification. That way it comes up in your feed. I do a couple of these per week. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com. But at the end, stay safe and visit your local barbecue joint. Good morning, Andrew. How are you? Good morning, man. Good. It's good to be here. Thanks yeah. for having me. Oh, no, I'm really excited. I, I'll put uh, links to your, to your website and I'll also, uh, I'll put them um, in the montage, some of your photos and I could live in your photos. There's, <laughs> that, there's a part of my soul that is, that I really, I love your photography and I, I can't wait to share with people that don't know your photography. And a lot of people are probably have seen, has, have seen your stuff, but don't know. So I, I, I commend you. I really love, I think, that's, I'm really excited to talk to you because I think that we share a kinship in that. It's, there's, it's Absolutely. Just, and I, and I want to start off, I want to get to your, to your history and I want to learn about your path, but your photo of Lexington Barbecue, the top view one, Lexington Barbecue yeah, yeah, is yeah. a place that I learned, like I really realized how massive barbecue was and how important and how integral it was to community. I didn't really, coming from Los Angeles, I didn't understand and I had to go twice a year to high point for furniture market and someone took me to Lexington barbecue and I went wait a second <laughs> so yeah. how did that photo how did that photo come about so basically um when I got into barbecue I tried to whenever I had a free moment just like go shoot places and mm -hmm. so it ended up turning into work and this was uh I did a project for Bon Appetit where they did kind of like the new wow. pit masters or whatever you want to call it and um, so I shot uh, Brian Furman at Beast Crackland Savannah. Um, and then I drove to Asheville and shot with Elliot Moss and then uh, went over and shot with Sam Jones when he had just opened Sam Jones Barbecue. And then I basically hit anywhere around. And so I knew that Lexington, like it was on my list. I'd always wanted to go. And man, like just being there, it's like, it's not going back in time, but it just kind of, it, it kind just of, yeah. feels so, you know, and uh, I had a buddy who was like, listen, outside brown, slaw, and then get hush puppies. And I was like, okay. And that's what I ordered. And I was just like, I'd never had a pork shoulder that tasted like that before. Mm -hmm. um, it was so different and interesting to me. And like, you know, I've messed around with them at home and like done a lot of work, like trying to like, you know, smoke barbecue pork butts, like on, you know, big green egg or like whatever. And I was like, man, this is fantastic. This is so good. And just being there and like everything's still on like the old check slip and like everything and everything comes out like that. And then mm -hmm. they're like, do you want to see the smokers? So I was like, yeah. And like went back and saw the whole deal with all the hickory slats and everything. Like it's, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I didn't know to. I wasn't in. Well, obviously, I wasn't into barbecue the way I am now, and I didn't know to go around back and and see. And I didn't. I don't even think I marveled at how beautiful a building it was. It was just. I think this over. I was overwhelmed by how different it was than anything I'd ever had. And how yeah. Amazing. I mean, my wife was like laughing at me because I had just basically eaten barbecue every day. <laughs> for you know seven days and she was like are you coming home i was like yeah i'm gonna stop at one more place on the way back though <laughs> and she was like seriously and i was like yeah i have to like uh, do you have photos of the, the pits and stuff did you take pictures i did i took them like i had a film camera with me um and i took some on there that like i don't think it's like it was early on and so i don't feel like they made the cut when like you know yeah. <laughs> like editing the website and putting them back on but yeah where did you grow up uh i grew up in atlanta um so i was born in new jersey which i think I only lived there for about six months. So I don't remember it, but I think it somehow instilled my love for Bruce Springsteen. Just those six months of me being a kid, like just like that, just like ingrained it in me. Uh, as you can see, like I have a picture of me. I have, yeah, I'm kind yeah. of like obsessed. And then um, moved to Savannah. And again, I was like a baby. And then, but my majority of my life, like suburbs of Atlanta and Lilburn. And then moved to the city when I was 19, went to Georgia State. I dropped out the band that I was playing and got signed. And so like we went on tour and I did that for a good number of years, trying to make it as a musician playing in different bands. And uh, what did you play? Bought my, uh, I played drums in one band and played guitar in another okay. um, and bought my first camera on like, we were doing a Europe run and I was like, I should have a camera when we go over to Europe. And then came back to Atlanta and started assisting with like wedding photographer um, just on the weekends. And um, at that time I uh, was getting married. Then the guy that we hired to shoot our wedding, he, I started assisting with him and he basically taught me everything I know about photography. So basically I was working during the week and then every weekend I was shooting a wedding with him. Wow. And it got to the point. What, 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 quick, 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 what, what, yeah, band, yeah. what bands were these? Were these? Bands that so, people would know, and, and what was that experience yeah. like? Um, so the band that I dropped out of school for was called Cartel. It's like a pop punk band, mm -hmm. um, and I played guitar in that. And then um, the other band I played was Manchester Orchestra, and I played guitar. You're in the first. You are. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? The, yeah, Manchester so Orchestra like, is is one of my favorite all time, and I feel like not that many people know any anybody I share them with like they're kind of surprised that they didn't know about them and they're fantastic i mean they're still one of my favorite bands i you know still good friends with them uh i played guitar in the first album and then um when the drummer got married i filled in on drums for him uh for like, like, like cope and hope like those no this was uh this was the first record i'm like a virgin losing a child so basically okay. Yeah, so even like I play guitar on that album and then I filled in on drums when they were touring on that album. Okay. I apologize everybody. It's like I'm just like I'm shocked because no, yeah. I feel like they've they've shaped me as a because they're they're very cerebral, they're haunting, they're it's it's a it's a different type of band. And I also feel like I, I figured something out with, with Cope and Hope because yeah, there was like an they came out, I forget was Cope came out and then it was like a hard, hard guitar album, and then they created a the acoustic version. Because I was listening yeah. on Spotify or something, I'm like, "What the? These are the same song." Wait, and yeah, okay. Yeah, they're amazing. They're ah. great and good, good folks. And yeah, I still. Me how and did you? Andy how did you keep in touch really hard? You and Andy? Okay, well, tell them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, he, I'm sure he watches it. Oh, that's so. I'm sorry. That's I didn't know this part of you. I just know the photographer part of you. That's. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was my original intention for a career. Obviously, and I think when you're. 25 and still eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the back of a tour van you're kind of like okay this isn't like this um, isn't gonna be it for me yeah that's, that's that's really interesting so did you tour europe with them or were you with uh, your with cartel so i was touring europe with manchester orchestra mm -hmm. um it was like they went to europe on their own and i filled in on that and then we were on tour with kings of leon for like the u.s part um mm -hmm. while the drummer at the time was on his honeymoon so interesting yeah. past life so that's okay so then that's and that's how you got into photography. What was your first camera that you bought mm -hmm. and why did you buy that? It was, I bought it because uh, a friend of mine was selling it. It was a Nikon <laughs> D50 okay. and uh, I knew it was a DSLR and I knew it would like, you know, it would be worthy of, you know, touring the Guinness factory. I bought <laughs> that. And then when I got back to uh, Atlanta, the wedding photographer I was assisting with, he shot Canon. 
And so I bought a, a Canon camera. So it's easier to kind of, you know, interchange lenses and for all sure. that kind of stuff. And it was easier for him to work with the files and whatnot. And um, yeah, so I did that for a while. Like I went full time in 2011 and I shot weddings up until like 2015. But like what when you go full time, uh, it's actually once you've done it long enough, I had assisted long enough that you kind of have the the lay of the land for the day okay. and you kind of know what to expect. I mean, there's always, you know, the chance that something can go wrong technically, you know, or something. That was always like my biggest fear. Was yeah, like, that's my, if I, a if card, I think about it, yeah. A card corrupt or you know something not working and I experienced some of those things when I did it but it always kind of worked out I was always able to recover things and I enjoyed it a whole lot I think the only reason I stopped doing it was because I knew I couldn't be like 50 like I couldn't I couldn't see a long-term path of being a wedding photographer I think it's in photography I think it's one of the things that gets people to go full-time because the best thing about it is you're booking ahead of time so like as a freelancer you know that I knew the reason I was able to go full time. I was like, okay, I booked 25 weddings next year. I know I'm going to be okay yeah. money wise. So I can stop. And when you're freelance, you kind of like, I don't know when my next you know thing is coming. So it's an easy step into self-employment. And also like, um, you know, when you're 25, 26, all your friends are getting married. So it's like, hopefully you're getting hired to shoot their weddings. <laughs> and then like, they're referring you to their and there and I think there's that like integral time where it's like after that's passed it's like that's interesting okay like can I still do this full time you know there's a lot of other people up and coming now doing it and so I just I knew that I wouldn't be able to do it full time long term uh, a buddy of mine who's a graphic designer uh, does a lot of work for restaurants he's like hey have you ever shot a restaurant before I was like no he's like do you want to and I was like sure you know when you're full time you're like yeah anything that pays money I'll, yeah. I'll do it and so I uh, bought a tripod. I practiced doing long exposures in my house like three days before, like I had the shoot. I shot the interiors and they really liked it. And they're like, hey, do you want to try shooting the food? And I was like, sure. And so I went and shot the food and um, they really liked it. And that guy ended up opening more restaurants. So then I was shooting more of his restaurants. One of his restaurants like ended up on the Esquire list for like best <laughs> restaurants that year. That got me um, some edit some other restaurants in Atlanta started hiring me at that point. I was still shooting weddings and then um, started shooting editorial stuff, um, Garden and Gun and like a couple of other magazines like had seen my photos of those restaurants. And so it just kind of was like a slow yeah, like snowball, a like a really slow snowball, but a good one. And I could see kind of like I was starting to get more into it. I started getting more into food. I was becoming better friends with like chefs and um so eventually i got to the point where i didn't have to shoot weddings anymore and i could just do full-time okay food so and beverage and and whatnot were they using those photos for their website is that kind of yeah yeah this was kind of pre-instagram i guess i mean instagram was around but it wasn't like the advertising like mm. juggernaut that it is now so yeah. like it was i was getting hired like you know twice a year basically it's like all right we're opening the restaurant and then shoot the restaurant shoot the food shoot the people throw it up on the website and then like oh, we need to update our website, like six months later, right. come back. What do you think of those photos when you look back on those now? Uh, I still have like some of them on my website. It's interesting. So like 246 was the first restaurant I ever took pictures of. And I just shot their 10 year, like oh. did a refresh because they just kind of changed the concept a little bit. And it's like, I'm not ashamed of like the old ones. I mean, there's definitely stuff I do differently now. I used to shoot mostly natural light. Now I shoot pretty much all with lights all the time. So it's like, there's obviously some difference, but like, yeah, I mean, there's some of them I don't like, but you know, yeah, that's how, how, that, that's how it goes, right? No, that's always, <laughs> like, when yeah. I look back and sometimes I, sometimes I look back on these and I, I go, I'm surprised that I, I said the things I said or that I was, I, <laughs> no, I'm presenting, sometimes I'm proud of that, that person yeah. three years ago. Oh, wow, good, good for him. Yeah, like, totally. He does sound confident a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> but like with, nat with natural light and lights, because I'm, I'm taking a course with, uh, I don't know if you know, Justin Clemens, uh, he has a, yeah, a, yeah. a photo school um, and an online photo school and community. It's kind of, it's, it's a really cool thing. I haven't been able oh, to do awesome. as, as much because I'm thinking of my mother, but I, uh, at least I could watch, I could watch stuff and from afar and do and learn about lighting, but I didn't realize 
the power of using lights and you can yeah. mimic natural light and you can make things you can control your environment is that what did how when did you get into using lights is that something that I basically, it was by, it was by necessity of basically going into restaurants that had no natural light and being like, well, yeah. what am I going to do? You yeah. know? And like, if people are paying me money, I need to be better prepared for things like this and getting used to the fact that it's never really going to look like natural light. Like you can, yes, you can mimic it, but there's still something that like yeah. is lost in translation somehow. It started with that. And then also after doing that, realizing like, oh man, like, this is such an easier edit afterwards because everything is consistent. I'm using the same power of the light. I'm using the same environment and it was much easier to edit afterwards. And like, to be honest, uh, when I started shooting food, there weren't a lot of other people shooting food in Atlanta. Um, and then over time it's become more of like yeah. something that people have gotten into. So to kind of separate myself from other people, I tried to start using lights more and like develop my own style and look so that people were hiring me for that, not just as like a guy who can shoot food. So it was honestly sense. like, it was more so of, like, I need to learn what I want things to look like, work on that and try to develop my own style. So that way it's not like, well, he can shoot a plate of food next to a window and he costs this much, but this person... <laughs> They shoot a plate of food next to a window and they only cost this much. Or, they'll do, it for, or they'll do it for free because they yeah, want something yeah. for their portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Did it take you some adjustment or did you have did you know lights from a little no, bit? No, it the... took a lot. No, it took a lot of adjustment. I mean, I took uh, that's a whole other world. That's it is. It is. And it's, you know, it, it was Scott, the guy that I shot weddings with, he knew a lot about lights. So I learned some from him. I learned some from taking a workshop in Atlanta. I learned some from YouTube videos, you know, like, and now, I mean, honestly, there's so much information so much out there. And even like, not even like educational resources, like even if you just follow photographers that you like on Instagram, they'll show you behind the scenes of photo shoots. And it's just like, I would screen capture those and be like, I do what are they doing there? <laughs> like, I wonder like what that light is doing. I wonder what that light is doing. And just start practicing on my own and like trying to figure out, mm -hmm. you know, mimicking that also like trying to come up with my own kind of style for it. Yeah, it's, it, it is. That, that's actually a really, like if there's a photographer that's watching this or listening, that is a really good thing. Cause I'll like, there's someone, I don't know, you know, I'm, you probably know Ken Goodman, do you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah but, but i'll screen because he he shows his setups a lot he shows all yeah. this stuff and he has like it's intricate and detailed and it's a it's it's interesting to see because a lot of times you, don't, you have no idea what people are doing it's yeah there was I mean, a if lot you follow of mystery art striber like he does dedicated posts to every single editorial shoot that he does wow he does one post is all behind the scenes what light he's using how he's using it, everything. And then he has another post that shows the result. And it's like, it's fantastic. Oh, that's really cool. Okay, I'll, I'll check that out. There's a lot of people to follow. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really we can, cool. We can talk about Instagram later because it's yeah. whatever. But yeah. it, is, it is whatever. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's also changed a lot. But let's, yes. so how, did, how did you get it? Then, then how did you fold into the barbecue world? So barbecue world came first from like, it's like my favorite food to enjoy. And then also, I think starting out as like a food photographer, you want to shoot fancier restaurants for lack of a better term, right? Like, what are the cool restaurants in town? What are they doing? What are the fancier places? And I think somewhere along the line, after getting into food more and reading more about it, being more interested in food that serves everyone and that like everyone enjoys and so that kind of started it, um, listening to oral histories on the Southern Foodways website about barbecue restaurants yeah, and whole great. hog barbecue and just like getting into that, like that really is like what kind of got my wheels turning and then just traveling on the weekends to go to like take pictures of some of those places. And like, I, I was definitely, barbecue was cool at that point. You know what I mean? Like it was starting to be a thing. I, you know, I, I heard an NPR podcast with Rodney Scott. And I was just like, oh, I have, I have to go <laughs> here. Like I have to take, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to go. And then like just meeting other friends that would come through and cook at like festivals through my other friends' restaurants or like do guest dinners and like stuff like that and meeting people. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, and did you, do you remember the first place that you shot for barbecue? I'm looking at great question. 
Who is it on your, who's on your on your website? What's the barbecue spot with the woman with the coals and it's it's like a corrugated metal building almost. Oh, Helen Tur- Helen Turner. Oh, it's Helen Turner. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but she looks so, really familiar, and I'm like trying to figure out who is that person. Okay. Yeah, so that, that was like um, somewhere along the line, Sam Jones gave my name to Yeti, and I did a couple of like projects for them, and Helen was amazing. So they're like, Yeti is an incredible company, and they like are so good creatively that they were so like, smart. is there anybody? They're like, is there anybody that you think is really cool and what they're doing in barbecue? And I was like, I had watched the, you know, little documentary on Helen Turner. I had seen like little things and I was like, I'm just fascinated by her. And I was like, Helen. And they were like, okay, we'll go shoot it. And I was like, well, do you want like product in it? They're like, no, we don't want anything like that. I just want to like do that. So like calling Helen and telling her I was, you know, taking gonna take photos for like a cooler company. She's like, I don't need a cooler. I got I have coolers. I don't need one. Like she she could care less That's about it. And then when I got there, like she was kind of a little like, is this guy okay? Like, who's this guy driving from Atlanta to like come take pictures of me for some company I've never really like heard mm-hmm. of or care about? And so she called John T and asked John T if like she knew if he oh, knew really? who she I was. John T. Yeah, just funny. And then John T was like, yeah, he's fine. And so then we spent the day together. I mean, she's amazing. I mean, I've never, I've been in a lot of barbecue places. I've never cried because of smoke more than in hers because her pit is next to her burn barrel or burn pile, whatever you want to call it. And like, it is like, it smokes you out. It's insane. But she doesn't season her pork before she puts it on the pit, wraps it in foil, like, you know, halfway through. And somehow it tastes incredible. Like it just doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? Like it kind of just like defines like what she does. I'm just kind of, I don't get it. And that's kind of more of like the that's allure of like this, this mystical. person. Yeah. It's, it really is mystical. And I mean, just like busy as can be, but it's a small town barbecue spot. You know what I mean? It's like the sheriff comes by and hangs out and like, you know, it's, it's, it's what barbecue really is. That's yeah the essence of barbecue. And, it, and it's yeah. those photos, they're breathtaking. They're really amazing. And it's, it's so, it's such a, it's such an interesting thing to see that a human does that every, but there's humans like that doing that across the United States. There's like a handful of re, of dedicated people that are just like putting themselves in like torture chambers. Like it's, that's, I know. And it's not, it's, I think that's the thing. It's like, you start to realize like what you think is special about something. What do you mean? Like my job? Like, what do you like, who cares? You know? So I think that that's like an interesting thing too. When you think about barbecue of like, what is something that's like amazing to you? It's like, just like, I don't know. This is what I do every Uh day to make, you know, like $15 an hour to just like, you know, shovel coals (laughs) all day. And like, you think it's amazing. I just think it's hard work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I I don't know anything different. This is just what I do. Whereas there's yeah. people that are, you know, that are coming up the ranks and that are opening up places because of they because they love that style. And but it's it's different when it's something that like when I talked to um, Zach Parker at, at uh, Beast yeah, like, yeah. and his dad, like his like hearing stories about his dad and how his dad would run through like a pair of sneakers every month because he would just be on his feet constantly and it was so yeah. much work and and there's there's places like that that's and those are the places that i like to shine like highlight you know off the beaten path places are there's something special about that there's absolutely when you find yeah, zach's too. place was actually the second part of that trip like right after helen's i went to to zach's oh did was, you okay yeah yeah it was amazing oh, i haven't seen those photos are those photos you don't have any of those photos anymore. Like, uh i need to put some of them up i just felt like uh Maybe I don't know. I had like done so many on this <laughs> section that I was like, I don't know. I need to put some of his up. I know, no yeah. shit. That's yeah. cool. That's somewhere that I've wanted. And I and he's always been so kind and so generous. To he's me. wonderful. Yeah. Great soul. Every year, every year at Charleston Wine and Food, they would do a pitmaster dinner. So like they would like honor a different pitmaster. And so I would go every year to go to this dinner because it was somebody different. And one year, like Zach was the person. And it's oh. like, you know. Rodney, Pat, Sam, who like a bunch of people have cooked at it and would like bring the hog through the front doors. And like when Zach did it, there was just like a pile of Wonder Bread 
on the table and then they just put whole hog down and then like you know the other guys would cook sides and they get chefs to come in and cook sides too and like it was just this like fantastic thing and so I learned of some people through that too and Helen was one of them like she okay. did it one year um and that's kind of how I had heard of her Sam was one year Zach was one year so it was always like kind of like the people doing whole hog but they did patillos um oh. did uh, from Texas one year and Miguel um one year so like it was always just like something that was close to me that I could go like drive to and like you know experience and I wouldn't I wasn't even taking pictures I was just going to go just because I wanted to yeah yeah have they had that since has that has been... no because I mean honestly they used to have it at Jim and Nick's and um Charleston that's closed and then they had it at Rodney's one year um I don't know what has happened with it just kind of like hasn't happened the last like two years so yeah, yeah. I think that wasn't Sam when he did it. Was he the one who said it the, when the first year when he did it, he was so nervous. I think it was like, yes, he didn't feel yeah, like he yeah, belonged. He and also didn't feel like he knew what he was doing. And like Pat has some good stories about that, about like talking to him behind the thing and him just like mildly freaking out about it. <laughs> that's, that's which so is funny. funny to think about because like Sam now is like, you know, he's like, I could do this in my sleep, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he does, and he does that with like 70 cameras around him. And it's like a, it's, I've, I've seen him like he came to LA when I was talking to you about off camera about the LA food bowl and the, that big thing. Yeah. 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 yeah he, uh, he, yeah, it's just, it's second nature now to do these kind of things and for all of them and totally. that, whole, that whole group. And, and one of the reasons why I knew about you specifically was mm -hmm. because of Pat Martin and he spoke highly in, of the collaborative process with you on his book. And I don't want to forget to talk about that there's a, this is going to kind of jump around and i, I, I kind of want to yeah. i want to want to talk about going to see miguel and saul and all them but 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 how did that how did that come about with pat martin and his book and his book is beautifully um, shot and it's just a great book. thank you so i so, mean i'm friends with like you know a lot of these barbecue guys but like pat like i felt like a connection to him that i hadn't felt like other people I, I don't know what it is but like i don't know we had an incredible time shooting that book. I mean, it was a very much a labor of love, but because the way that Pat wanted to do it got me very excited about it because it wasn't just shooting another cookbook. It mm -hmm. was like, he wanted to shoot every process of it. And so basically as soon as he signed the contract, well, let me go back a little bit. So I had met Pat at like Charleston Wine and Food. Every time I went to Nashville, I'd hit him up. We'd like, you know, say hi, but we weren't yeah. very close. We just kind of like knew of each other. Um, a good friend of mine in Atlanta, Angie Mosier, who's also a photographer and oh, yeah, yeah. so um, food stylist, she texted me and was like, hey, I heard Pat's doing a book. You should see if you can do it. And so I just texted Pat. I was like, hey, man, I heard you're doing a book. I'd be honored to be considered. And he called me and was like, if you want to do it, you're on. He was like, I know you've already worked with the publisher. Like, let's do it. And I was like, great. And then when literally a month after that I drove out to Mississippi and we started shooting and that was 2018 maybe 29th okay. no it was 2018 and that started it and my first experience being out there was you know I had shot whole hog barbecue a lot but it's always from the same vantage point right it's always like you're at the pit and you can kind yeah. of like you see what's happening but you don't see like what is actually happening the first thing that happened was he was like oh we don't got a we got a track hoe so they put me up i'll send you a picture of it they squeezed a pallet in between the claws of the trap and i stood on top of the pallet and they lifted me up like 30 feet in the oh. air so i could pictures of him firing the hog from above and they were messing with me the whole time because i was like you know this city guy you know out here like in corinth mississippi and like the guy actor kept squeezing the pallet every once in a while just to like mess with me. And like, I was like, if uh, I fall off thing, I'm first like I'm shooting, I'll never hear the end of it. Never, never. Um, but yeah, that was like the first foray. And then it was like, you know, anytime we were doing something, we did it so we could. And Pat wanted to show a much different side of barbecue and a much larger, you know, area of focus than I had seen in other barbecue books. So anytime you have you you can connect with somebody who has a passion like that, it's it's infectious. And so he knew how passionate I was about barbecue in general. And this was my first time to actually shoot a barbecue book. 
So I was just very much like, I have to make this like great and I have it different. And I have to like, I really want to push myself to like make it look different than other books and make it feel different. And Pat was very much of the same mindset. So we basically did it backwards. We basically shot, overshot everything. I mean, there's so many images and then they could just choose from for the book. Whereas normally publisher gets a script, they choose the recipes, they choose what the process shots are. And then you have creative leeway to shoot those however you want, but there's kind of like a shot list to stick to. This was like, we see a gallery of like, you know, 2000 images and we're like, here you go. And did they, so, yeah. were, but they understood what Pat's idea was. And it's, it's for people that might not know. I don't like, know if they, to- they, they knew a little bit, but oh, I don't really? think they knew it. that we were shooting think they knew that we were shooting as much as we were when I sent it to the art director she goes oh wow like this is like the whole book (laughs) oh and I was like yeah we basically did it and then we still there was always hey Andy are you in Nashville soon we need to shoot like we forgot to shoot this thing or we forgot to shoot this thing like we just like kept adding on things but it ended up really really good to the point where I added pages because they had so many images to work with which was great yeah, and and it's it's different than other books. It's not like you said. It's not just it's not just recipes. There's rest. There's some recipes in there, but it's more of a of a guide on how to cook whole hog and how to and all the processes and and the history. It's a, it's it's different. It's it's I and think, it's in his voice, which for sure is so important. I like until you like read it and do it. The reason it's like so attainable and accessible to me is because of the way he talks about doing it. Mm-hmm. It's not your temperature gauge has to do this and you have to do this. Like he almost teaches you how to learn with feel, which mm-hmm. I think has always been a hard thing for me. Like even when they tell you like, you know, the temperature of a steak thing, or like if you hold down a different part like one, one finger, it's like raw or like, you know, like medium rare, rare, whatever. I still can't like, I will like, you know, push my steak and then like <laughs> get the temperature probe and like put it in there. So being around that and just the way that he approached it and everything i mean i feel like there's only certain chances in like careers where you get to do like the dream project and i feel like i got and like everything else is great but like the fact that i got to do that with pat and the fact that like it's out in the world now it's just it was like honestly like emotional for me like i called him after i got like my first copy and i was just like man i can't believe this like we actually it's done like we did it yeah no that's something you could be proud of forever I, I that's like you could if you can go into a different career and be proud that you had that that i i feel like it's something it's there's something really special and i'll put i'll put links to it below and i want to do a piece on that book alone because i think it needs oh, awesome. yeah yeah because it's just it's because of the photographs but also pat and like and talking to Pat, Pat is a special human. He's a special person. He he's serious about what he does, and he's thinking. You can tell he's just yeah. Okay. He's always <laughs> thinking though. Yeah. How did you come up with the idea? And I'll put it in the, the intro. That photograph of the winemaker. Her, she's standing in the barrels. Like that's such a cool shot. That's which winery is that? Uh, so that's Martha Stuman. Uh, she's a great winemaker in California. So once I started getting wine. Um, I was just ordering from different producers wine. Um, I had taken pictures of a guy uh, in Philadelphia. His name's Joe Betty. Uh, he does the pizza camp um, on Instagram. I got him for a Bon Appetit story. Um, and Joe's really into wine and he would always post different wines that he was drinking. And her labels caught my eye. So I sent her uh, an email and ordered some wines from her. And she's like, it's the first time I've, you know, shipped wine to Georgia like how did you hear about me and so uh I was like if you ever need photos let me know and then it just kind of started so she sent me some bottles we started with like some bottle photography and then out for harvest it's it's amazing I mean there's always something happening and so there wasn't really any idea behind the photo like that's what just she was doing at the time figure out how to capture this so yeah yeah. she is amazing her wines are fantastic and Every time I go out there, I feel like I just learned so much from her and rabbit hole of yeah, <laughs> of yeah. knowledge and depth and stuff that happens with those things. Yeah, the, the and the wine world is just as fascinating to me as the barbecue world. And it's, and it's, yeah. it's a, the different wineries. Like I got into wine when I was in a past life and I was married and we'd go around, we go to, you know, 
up in Los Olivos and Santa Barbara area, but then all the way up to Sonoma and Napa. And there's just so, so many, like the, the, the region's so interesting. The places are so interesting. The people are so interesting. The styles of grapes, every, everything is so different and it's beautiful and it's, it's, and it's labor intensive and it's, you never, you know, you don't know what, what's going to turn out. A lot of times, kind of like with barbecue, you're cooking over 12, 15 hours, and then, you know, you could, you could ruin it. <laughs> hopefully it's good. Yeah. yeah hopefully, hopefully it's good. It's, yeah. Hopefully it's good. Those worlds are starting to act a lot more too, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, like Pat's really into wine. Billy Durney is really into wine. Like you start to like see, like, it's almost like a better beverage to drink cue because it doesn't fill you up, you know, like, I don't know why like bourbon and barbecue became like such a thing. Cause that's like opposite of like uh -huh. what I would to, to drink with, with barbecue and like wine is such a good pairing mm -hmm. with, with like these like smoky, like unctuous, like umami, you know, flavors. It's cool to see that those like things are happening often. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I have like a wine and barbecue show with, with Aaron Fegis and yeah 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 and that's what's kind of like because i i knew it was such a great pairing and i always felt like in my mind i'm like someday i'm gonna move up to napa and open a barbecue place and it would be like that was like my dream when i was married and my wife was a vegetarian and i was like this is yeah. probably never gonna happen but it, but it was something yeah. that i and then i then once we just in spring ranch opened theirs up and she had a whole wine program then salt and straw like out of that out of salt and straw comes up oh the first cookbook ever shot was with Hugh Atchison and um he uh out of Athens he owned a restaurant um in Atlanta called Empire State South that I had done some work for uh he was doing his third cookbook and the publisher was like we love your photographer from the last two books but we want to do something different for this book because it was going to be a, a slow cooker book like a crock pot book oh. so he somehow convinced them that I should do it They're like a test shoot it was my first cookbook I ever shot and ended up going well they really liked the images and so they referred me they were like hey we have this book coming up we think you'd be a good fit for it from salt and straw and so it was the only second cookbook i ever shot and oh. it's basically the most the most challenging you know subject matter ever is ice cream because it melts uh -huh. and so uh i flew out to portland met tyler and we started working on this book luckily he had a lot of tricks to keep the ice cream in good form. But we basically shot that entire book in like 200 square foot ice cream lab. Oh, and I went and bought, I went and bought all these colored boards from like an art store. We tried to like make it feel different than other ice cream books. Like he was, I mean, he's an ice cream genius. Like the ice cream is fantastic. Yeah, it's some of the best I've ever had, yeah. And his, his flavors you just would never expect things like he would tell me a flavor of an ice cream and i'd be like that sounds awful and then i would taste it and be like that's delicious i don't know what i don't know how that works and so um yeah we basically i mean that was like a little over a month that we shot that and then i shot some of he had to mail me some ice cream so we could kind of finish it doing some of it in atlanta but yeah that was the second book i had ever shot and oh i didn't yeah, know that i mean okay. that that ice cream is fantastic. Yeah, it took a while though, because I think Salt and Straw was in the midst of like expanding and I don't think Tyler wanted it to come out oh, okay. until like a couple of the stores were like open so they could sell it in more stores or something like that. So they kind of like delayed the the um, the pressing or the publishing yeah. of it, but yeah. So do you find yourself, do you think going forward, you'll be shooting more makers, more barbecue people, more, and I, and, and I, and I should say you shot the photos for Matt Horn's book. Too. oh yeah yeah uh which is also a great experience probably like a little bit more like opposite uh of pat's just because of like matt has his systems down to like a science and so like when i got there like he was like ready to go even though he had never done a cookbook before like he knew everything that had to be done he had done his research on other books and so like you know we shot that over a week it was very, very long day, but like, book, you yeah. know, yeah, it was, it was, it was great. And being out there and seeing the way that he does things and just seeing Oakland react the way that they have to him was like amazing, you know, and his story is pretty awesome. And so getting to spend time with him and his wife and his kids and stuff yeah, was that's, great. And that's a unique experience of something that, and it, and the fact that it's different than Pat's. Pat's, I don't think you'll ever yeah. have something like that again. No, I won't. And that's kind of like, that's singular to him and yeah. Pat and everything. Um, Whereas like Matt was more so like the way he does his barbecue, you know, and I'm not that well versed in Texas style of barbecue. Oh. 
so I learned a lot from Matt of kind of how he does things and like you know we had to shoot a lot of like uh, trimming and like like processes for like the book and so like learning on how he does it was like super interesting to me just because I've tried to do a brisket I think three times and just realized that it's not something that I'm going to be able to do well um, so I'm always fascinated by the people that can do it consistently great yeah. every single yeah. time with something that is not you know you pick out four briskets out of a thing and they're all going to look different they're all going to have different you know fat makeup and everything and like just being able to see him do that day in day out consistently was very impressive yeah. And in, and in Oakland, a place that there wasn't a place like Matt's that, that are around, totally so and it, and, yeah. the, and the hurdles that he had to go through to get that open and it's yeah, it's, it's a lot. There's 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 a lot. It's it's it's, ex, it's exciting that that exists here in California because we don't totally we haven't had that for so long. When then and I knew that when I was when I went and lived in Texas and then came back, there was nothing like that that could emulate that at all. So. And it's funny yeah. how, that, how that's per me. That's like trickling everywhere. It really is. <laughs> it is going everywhere. But I mean, when I was in Portland, I mean, this was a long time ago for the Salt and Straw book. Like I went to uh, Matt's Barbecue, which was like mm -hmm. a little like shack at the oh, yeah. time. I don't know if he's like expanded more or whatever. And I remember it's like getting a now. plate. <laughs> it was a taco I was place. Like, I remember getting like a tray and being like, this is going to be like Portland Barbecue. It's like not going to be very good. And just being like, this is fantastic. Like, this is so good. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh -huh. like, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, and it, and, it, and, it, and it makes sense. But then do you think, do you think you'll be doing more along the lines of barbecue? Or do you think because you have, you've done with like, a, is it, was it a flower company or a pasta? What was that? The flower one? That the was, flower lab book? Yeah, the flower um, lab, yeah. It's a, it's a chef. Um, he had Brooklyn Bread Lab um, oh, okay, in New York. Mm -hmm. And so that whole book was more of like milling your own grains for flour, for um, pasta, pastry, um, pizza, and uh you know we call it the brown food book because it was just like all brown which i love uh but yeah. you know <laughs> it gets hard it gets hard to make it interesting after a while i don't know i mean honestly i think i'm very thankful uh a photographer i know had always said like kind of like show what you want to shoot mm -hmm. and i feel like a very long process of just shooting these random barbecue places being able to actually shoot now to like cookbooks for people it feels like like I've just kind of like come to fruition. So I'd love to do more of it, obviously, but like being able to have something permanent, I think too, like a photographer now it's like nothing really gets printed, nothing. It's like, you know, it lives on the internet or it lives in a magazine, yeah. you know, for like a limited amount of time. And so it's really, you know, scary, but also great to have something that's like permanent, that like lives on someone's shelf and that it's like, you know, it's there forever, so. Yeah. So do you mean, you mean in a cookbook or do you mean in your own, like have your own book someday? Um, I don't know. You know, there was that a tough as a photographer? kind of, I think it's tough because like how, how many people would actually be interested in it? You know what I mean? I think you have like a niche that would probably be interested in it. And like, um, I had toyed around with like the idea of having kind of like a coffee table book or whatever, but then it's, it's like, you see somebody like Wyatt McSpadden who has like two of them. It's like, well, that's, better so i'm just gonna let him have it you know what i mean like he's, yeah, like, he's done it yeah yeah he's so it's it's we're good you know so i yeah, don't know i i would be happy to do i don't know i don't know it's it's weird to put yourself you don't, out there i'd rather be associated with somebody doing something great than to try to do something on my own you know what i mean like i would rather like latch on to what somebody else is doing than like yeah. do it myself if people are interested in your prints do you sell can, pe can they purchase things from you right yeah that's something that I've, I've 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 toyed around with like um having a print shop online i've done it before like people just ask me like um there's a, a restaurant in town called homegrown and they have kind of a, a very famous breakfast item called the comfy chicken biscuit which is a oh, biscuit okay. fried chicken and sausage gravy and it's amazing oh, this sounds ridiculous and i i took i took a picture of it and then like i put it on instagram and people were like messaging me is like hey i want to get a print of that and i was like okay yeah okay so i thought about doing that yes everything's available yeah for sure right, but yeah. um i don't have it i just don't have an official like store or yeah yeah, yeah. no that's what i'm saying like if people like dm you which is like silly or oh, yeah. email you i'll put your can i put your email in the notes show notes absolutely or? yeah yeah i, I guess it's that. probably off of your way like they can con go to your website and they can uh, contact you that way too yes that's true yeah yeah no like, because as a photographer i'm sure 
it would be nice to be able to, you know, have your stuff on people's walls too, because that's, you know, it lives on that way too. It's an, that's the biggest honor ever. I think if somebody would, you know, somebody wants something that you've done, like to like live permanently on their wallet. Yeah. And there are, it, that's what you like, I think, cause like that's, I'm, I'm really into photography and I really love it, but I don't, I would never, I don't know if I, that would ever be a road that I would go down as a photographer, but it's, it's amazing how many people are into photography and there's a lot of people like that it's, and it's growing and growing. And then especially, you know, with phones now, like the, the oh, photographs yeah. people can take with their phones are so. Yeah. It's insane. It's absolutely insane. Yeah, so that's it. Kind of um, makes me nervous. It makes me nervous that like the AI is going to get to some point where it's like yeah, it tells when you're taking a good photo. Like there's going to be some little like green like arrow that's like no 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 go this way. And then it's like oh yeah there it is. Yeah, like, adjust that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like yeah, it has like the and then it, like it's like do you want to make it an NFT? Do you want to? So, yeah, yeah. Like, do, do you want to? We're only like, a couple of years away. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it's also too, you know, you have your voice and do you feel like you found your voice as a photographer or are you still searching for that? Or I think I've just started to, you know what I mean? And I think it's uh, uh, several years of imitating to like kind of like start to like come to a full circle of like, okay, this is what I like and this is what I want things to look like. And I think it's also the more I learn, the more it's like, you have to be a little bit of a chameleon sometimes and be able to produce what other people want it to look like. So being able to have, you know, tricks up your sleeve that you can like, okay, I can make it look like this or I can make it look like Mm -hmm. that. And like being a little bit more versatile, I think, you know, I try to tailor images to like, I shoot 50% of my work is probably for restaurants, like um, being hired to shoot, whether it's for like, menu shots for Instagram or website or whatnot, tailoring the, the photography to the type of restaurant they are. So it's like, if it's a steakhouse, I want the images to look classic. I don't want them yeah. to look like poppy, crunchy, hard, you know, I want them to look like they've been there forever kind of thing. But if like, you know, if it's like Tex-Mex or if it's like, you know, dumplings or something like that, I want it to feel like a little bit more poppy and like mm-hmm. jump off yeah. the page a little bit more. Plus like Tex-Mex is hard to make look good just because it's, you know, yeah. It's not really made to look good. It's made to taste good. So things like that, I try to tailor imagery to like whatever the restaurant's trying to, you know, be as a brand or sell or be more of like an extension of their voice mm-hmm. rather than like my own take on their, their thing. And you have to understand the client and you have to understand, you have to be, a, you can't just also, I, th- I think with, with everything that you, that people do, you know, you can't just push your agenda on them. You have to. Right. And that's hard for some people, I think, and probably certain photographers, because they maybe have been so seasoned, they might not bend as much. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, and it kind of depends on the assignment, too. Like, if it's yeah. editorial, you have a little bit more creativity that's to kind true. of, like, do what you want. But it's like when you're actually shooting for the establishment themselves, you want to make sure it's representing what they want to represent yeah. as well. So, yeah, I think that's part of it. Sounds like you've... What an interesting life you've had. It's uh, <laughs> you've had like being in, in bands and then doing the photography and that's just, it's, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I mean, I would have never expected it to turn out like this. You know what I mean? I think I envisioned myself playing, you know, drums or guitar in a band until I was old. And so I'm very thankful, you know, I, I get to work with a lot of great people and the benefits are great, you know, like anything with like food and beverage. And that's like yeah. your, your industry and your friends, it's like, man, it's, it's a, it's a good thing to be a part of. That's ideal. And I, and I mentioned off screen too, like your, your initials are ATL, which is just so That's right. bizarre that you ended up in Atlanta. It's just... I know, like, see, you can even see my little, like my little logo oh, there, so... ATL. Oh, so yeah, I wasn't move. just, the, I, I, was, never, I wasn't, I yeah, never yeah. Move. so I wasn't just the one that figured it out. You actually figured it out too. Yeah. It took a second, but I figured it out. No, but, it was, but that's cool. That, that's, I like your logo. I like you. I like your aesthetic and I've, I wanted, I could, we could probably talk for another hour. Maybe we do a part two down the road, but I sure. Yeah. Essentially just wanted people to get to know you. And I'd heard such great things from Pat and his relationship with you. And then I've started to you know, dig deeper into what you did. And I saw that you're connected to a lot of people in my world and a lot of people that listen to this world. And, I, and I'll, put, I'll put links to all your stuff below. And that way, hopefully people can dive into and see that uh, you're one of us. No, I'm joking. No, that, hey, no, yes, no, yes no, that's, I've been ordained. I've been ordained. <laughs> no, that's, that's I, I yeah. really, no, um, I, I just appreciate what you do. And, I, and, and it's, it's, it's exciting to see someone that's as passionate about 
the little things like that. And I also, there's this one photo, I have to mention it, where it's an overhead shot and there's a dog laying. It's like a, what is, it's, do you know? Oh, the- uh, yeah, it's of Mashama Bailey. Um, yeah, so they have a restaurant de Grey in Savannah. And so that was for, um, they put out a book book, not a cookbook, but like I shot a picture, it's like their portraits for it. And um, her and um, owner, partner, Jono, um both have greyhounds and so like in the book like she's like making menu notes and like her greyhound is just like yeah. sitting over there next door you know and like yeah. it's like this like little above view of them yeah little moment it's really cool i'll put a i'll put a link to that then also too the photo of uh miguel and elliot by the pit. yeah but in yeah. the back in the background there's a building with the white the lettering there's like a um old lettering like painted lettering that looks i don't know it's intentional but it's so beautiful i like i like that you sometimes have a depth of field that you that you're capturing too which is really fascinating thanks man where was that for more often i feel great <laughs> yes <laughs> let me tell you more about this stuff I love. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> no but i'm just i um, what, going through your that, collection online it was exciting that was for so elliot and his dad made that pit oh that was one of his okay and um it was for like the inaugural like run on that he wanted to have miguel come out and kind of just like learn the smoker with him and do like a um combined like menu so they did like the um real deal holy field taco they also did like you know elliot's whole hog on a taco they oh, cool. did like a lot of like miguel's sin- signature things like he did the um was it the beef cheeks and then he also did what else i can't remember like he did his yeah. beans he did like you know it was like it was showcasing miguel in yeah. Asheville, um which was really cool because to see them like both work together and like Elliot's just such a student like if you ever see him in an event or anything he's always working hard and always like asking questions and looking and watching and like trying to just like develop his his knowledge more he really is like a student of the whole thing that's and pretty what, awesome and what yeah he's an interesting person too he's uh, yeah so eclectic and it's almost I I feel like there's certain people that are free in life that We'll mm-hmm. do anything. We'll show anything. Like he'll be skating and wear like interesting clothing, different colors, combinations. And like his, and the way it just, he just, he's like, I'm this, this is who I am. And, and a yep. lot of people are, are kind of hold back and maybe they'll show part of who they are. And so that's yeah something I've always loved from afar with him. And yeah, that's uh, the perfect observation. Elliot is Elliot. And he always like has been, you know, it's yeah. He's one of the best. Yeah. And when I, when I got a chance to talk to him too, it was like, ah, uh, like there's certain people that I'm, I'm like, I can't believe that I'm talking to Elliot Moss because, <laughs> because I've, I, I, I respect what he's, he's accomplished and his passion for things. So there's certain times yeah. we can go on and on and this just jumped all over, but I think that yeah, uh, we've covered a lot. And I, I just, again, like I just wanted people to, to get to know you better and thank you so much for taking your time. I, I truly thank appreciate you it. for having me, Kevin. I, I love, I love the conversation. We should have some more. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, and I hope to, you know, meet you in person uh, soon. Yeah. Soon, sooner than Same. later. <laughs> definitely. Same. Yeah.